Yes, we are doing topical truck storm, boys. A laughing death and moat spice. Yeah, fucking topical truck storm, boys. A fucking raggy, raggy, yeah, Now, I always loved how unabashedly raw and earnest the drones' music has been throughout the years. Everything from Gareth's coarse nasally delivery to the dirtiest of post-punk guitar tones. But this is another beast entirely. It digs onto your skin the more you listen to it, with its layers being so dense and occasionally cacophonous that you don't quite know how to process it all. There is an occasional feeling of familiarity in some of the messy, modulated textures, especially from their last album, Feeling Kinda Free, but it does more than enough to retain its own identity from that album or indeed any other. Oh, wow, it's unique, boys. We got a unique album on our hands. Oh, fuck me. So yeah, I guess you could say this feels kind of like Feeling Kinda Kinda of Freeze sister, but in the middle of a plastered acid trip whilst taking a dump at a carnival made out of corrugated tin sheds, and then being bucketed with paint by a garbage man. Yeah, garbage man. It's just as dense as that album, if not more so, but contains a vibe of a different kind entirely with multivariate hues and textures, whether that be psychedelic or squelched or warm or otherwise nightmarish and reminiscent of some form of dread or paranoia. Electronic embellishments as well are scattered throughout, although I do get lost in the madness of Fiona's bass and the sixth string I can't keep up with either. I mean, it's all just fucking hectic, cuz it's hectic, boy. The vocals are unsurprisingly inimitable and sound off some of the most disarmingly infectious lines and melodies as though he is a child of an alternate universe bloody Bob Dylan who actually did go on an Australian mountain range because he would imagine it would be some kind of change. You know, like he outlays on um, Outlaw Blaze, you know, go fucking listen to it, you fucking idiot. And this is all despite his lack of polished thoroughbred talent, and that's because he achieves all of his enjoyability in the emotions he propels through that nasally exaggerated swaggering delivery, making the most of what he has in an accent that only adds to his personality, boys. <laughs> yeah, because look, you can have all of the talent in the world but can't portray desperation, vulnerability, anger or angst or anxiety in a way like he does on this album. It's a skill unto itself and uh, yeah, he's just a fucking good egg, boys. And perhaps Perhaps even more crucially, he complements the messy Technicolor aesthetic of the production more than he has any right to. You know, I wasn't quite joking back there about the drunk fucking garbage man acid trip in a warehouse carnival kind of vibe because that's, it's just, yeah, it's this. <laughs> and the contrast Princess Fiona provides with her vocals is yet another layer to enjoy, being cleaner in tone yet still witch-like and unsettling. This is no more apparent than on Antimatter fucking animals where both her and Gareth feel almost like two halves of a crumbling relationship, although the ending here, where they scream together, Your politics are nothing but a fun fuck you! Your politics are nothing but a fun fuck you! It sounds just basically like a rally at University of Melbourne, you know. <laughs> now, Chameleon Paint does feel aptly named for that instrumental, but it moreover reinforces that feeling of a relationship being burnt to a slow, agonizing death in the lyricism and both sets of vocals. It's this palpable anger intermixed with feelings of alienation, estrangement, and resentment, mind you. As with every song here, Gareth's imagery is as abstract and as cryptic as ever. It almost feels like he's combining a political statement with a personal one on nearly every moment on this album. Also, the crawling guitar licks that keep coming back during the chorus, they're some of the best on the album for my money. Just catchy as fuck and delightfully woven in. Just beautiful, mate. Just beautiful. And if there is an exact opposite of monotonous, it is the guitar tones on this album. They're just constantly sinister and wretched and distorted like fun house but fed through a clown's mouth. Take Shellfish Toxin, an unwinding instrumental on the back end here, which makes you feel like you're taking a trip down Nightmare Lane, and I mean that in a very literal way. <laughs> and every moment and layer on this song is designed to unsettle, flowing into the self-titled track as well, Laughing Death and Meat Space, which is some kind of fucking 
fucked up ballad containing one of the most impactful moments on the record. I just get tingles every time Gareth sings Yes I Forgive You and Yes I Believe You because it's that intensity and vulnerability. I just, it feels like he doesn't even believe. It feels like he doesn't even forgive, you know, and he just pulls it off so well. It's fucking beautiful climax. It's eerie, it's immense, and moreover enjoyable and relatable. Just fucked up, mate. Just fucking beautiful. There are also explorative tempos backboarded by the drummer Lauren Hamill on Rubber Bullies, the song After, which also reminds me a little of King Gizzard, especially with some of the cheeky little guitar tones dancing about and fluttering around like a fucking, I don't know, a butterfly, boys. Fucking butterfly. Guitar tones. The future of history's tempo and feel also contains some off-kilter drum work underneath Littard's references to Gary Kasparov providing a different racehorse to hobble down, but I'll admit here that I wasn't in love with the way the verses were woven in, especially with the backup vocals from Fiona. Though, like every song here, it progresses naturally and climaxes even more so. In fact, most of the songs here parallel that kind of a climaxing song structure so that even if you aren't particularly in love with the feel or the tempo or the melody, you will be by the last rendition of the chorus. Take the verses in, you let me toys down. You know, which feels more impactful melodically than the chorus that I sort of just sung, at least until the last rendition where Gareth wails with no inhibitions and the instrumentation simply explodes alongside with the guitars as ever remaining the highlight, mirroring the fucking vocalist as though a sonic cousin. But see, before then, the chorus felt disparate from the rest of the song and without too much emotive power. But my god, the way they can just lure you in with that false sense of security and blast the boat out of the water. Nah, mate. Nah, yeah, yeah, nah. Nah, yeah. So this level of instrumental and songwriting proficiency makes every song here at least enjoyable, and the album therefore being consistently vile, beautiful, and worthy of your time and attention. So, yeah. Highly recommended, even if it's just to dig your ears into those infectious guitar leads or imaginative bass work, it's a masterful display of the dirtiest, most kaleidoscopic rendition of post-punk there is out there, and it's fucking beautiful. 4.6 out of 5, no joke boys, 4 point fucking 6! Hard. Oh. Well, not that hard, but fucking 4.6 boys, okay? It's fantastic shit, and hey, looks like, hey, yeah, I had to pick up my phone to finish a bit, ah, uh, fucking, alright, yeah, but just, <laughs> just fantastic, straight out of Melbourne, probably the best thing out of Melbourne, you know, with the bin, not Melbourne, Melbourne, okay, Melbourne. Alright, <laughs> Canberra, Canberra. Alright, uh, I'll see you later, alright, you fucking gooses. Just uh, have a good one, and yes, just listen to this album if you are looking for some, you know, Brain Bombs esque or, you know, fucking The Stooges just maxed out, you know, those kind of guitar riffs. Just fucking get into it, boys. Post punk boys. Alright, I'll catch you later. Just have a good one, boys. <laughs> wow!